enough enough is enough <music> Hi guys, how you doing? Today is a video that is very similar to one I did a few months ago due to being subjected to bullying, insults, judgment and all kinds of things for absolutely something that I have no control over or something I have not done or instigated just because somebody decided to put my name out there to be trolled, to be trashed for their selfish gains. For the first time I'm going to keep things just as they are. Today I'm not here to also play victim or defend myself because when someone has an opinion about you, it's very difficult to change them. But I'm here as a voice of so many women and children out there who have gone through what I'm going through or still are, but they can't speak out. Today I'm here to put to a full stop. Mental abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, someone using my name out there to actually drag me and exposing my children to the world of something that will never be erased ever. I'm also here to talk about parental responsibility and I'm here to state facts and set the record straight and those are the things I have on my agenda today. So this is not anything, it's not a pity party, I don't want people trolling someone here. I'm just going to state facts because I have reached the end and it's the day I say enough is enough. I need to live my life and I need to live my life peacefully and I need my children to experience a healthy environment with healthy people around them. Now, recently I was accused of not giving access to the father of my children. And it's so sad that he had to use a platform to actually wish my son a happy birthday and then drag my name to that. This is the second time that is happening. Putting me out there to be trolled, to be actually attacked in the name of, I love my children. Now, let's start with parental responsibility. We all know what the constitution says in article 53, by the way, and this is not me trying to flex, flex at you because I'm a lawyer, these are facts I want to state. And children have certain fundamental rights. And um, what I'm going to state today is not even about um, those fundamental rights, but I'm going to just state Article 53 1 of the Constitution of Kenya, which provides that every child has a right to parental care and protection, which includes equal responsibility of the mother and father to provide for the child, whether they are married to each other or not. 53 2, Article 53 goes on to say um, that a child's best interests are in the paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. Trust me. Minors are very delicate and we have the responsibility to take care of them. And me as a mother, that's exactly what I've been doing. Let's go back to this aspect of me, quote unquote, being labeled and being told that I am actually refusing to let the father of my children to have access. I have papers, I have evidence, I have screenshots of everything I have tried to do to actually bring him to become a better father. I have protected him. I have never gone online to say anything ill about him, whatever way you want to think. I've never sat down, but today I'm not going to protect him anymore. That's what's going to happen. Let's start. By the time he left home, I begged him to buy Lexi a little phone uh, or uh, just find a way to be calling him to call home. And since I'm the bad person and he doesn't want to contact me, he, I gave him a leeway to actually contact our nanny however often he wanted to and check up on his children. I can tell you this for a fact. He's never called home. He's never checked up on his kids other than the day he's decided like he's gonna show up. And this is what happened. From the minute we broke up, I knew things have to change. We have to get structure so that we're not in any other person's ways. And trust me, I have all the records to do that. I mean, having me try to do that. I told him, can you give me a structure in a way that we can take care of these kids? He kept telling me, I will bring, I'll bring, I'll bring. A year, four months later, I've never seen any structure. Never. We had back and forth, back and forth. At some point, he wasn't seeing those kids, especially between January and April. It would always be like you drop by every now and again, which I didn't have a problem with because I always encourage my kids to be brought up by their parents. I grew up in a single parenthood. 
um, status and I know how it feels like. But you cannot force a parent to be a parent to their child. Being a parent takes so many forms of responsibilities. And I'll explain that in a few. Let's stick to the cause of this action. When I sat down and I encouraged him, including the day I sat him down and I cheered him on and I told him, hey, I want you, I'm really rooting for you. I want you to be a better dad. This was in July, just before I found out he has he had a child, another child on the way. And he sat there looking at me for a whole hour. My best friend was around. She's my witness. Sat there. I was talking to him. He never even bothered to tell me, yes, these are the plans I have. This is over a year later for my kids so that we can have a structure. Guys, please note, all I've ever asked for is structure because the kids are in dire need of structure. Because there's a new child in the world, I was living in his mother's house. I'll come to that. And I needed to know what does the future look like? How much longer do I have so I can move out? But I kept being misled, taken round and round. And here I was eventually in July when I decided to take action in my own hands. And this is what I did. On the 24th of July, I'm not going to show this letter in per se because of uh, preventing like uh, some contacts, but this is a letter he has. It was hand delivered to him on the 27th of July. This is what I wrote to him. The above matter um, uh, refers, and this is about upbringing and welfare. I'll put actually screen, screenshots of this in parts, yeah? Upbringing and welfare of your children, Tao Alexander and Kai Kerry. And this is what we asked, yeah? Um, let me go to the point, yeah? This is what we said. You will appreciate that the welfare and upbringing of the minors is of paramount importance and our client is apprehensive that failure to have a healthy discussion in this regard shall be detrimental to their welfare and upbringing contrary to the provisions of Children's Act number 8 of 2000 Laws of Kenya. And this is what we said. In view of foregoing and the need for structure and consistency with regards to the minors going forward, kindly do agree an informal without prejudice meeting with our client and the undersigned at X location uh, at by the poolside on 29th of July 2020 at 2.30 p.m. or any other date and time that is convenient to you to be communicated to us in writing prior to our proposed date. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss the way forward with general welfare and upbringing of the minors. Listen. We do not intend to play the role of a lawyer in the meeting, but that of a facilitator stroke mediator. You may wish to be accompanied by your lawyer. Listen, this letter was hand delivered to him on the 27th of July, proposing for a meeting on 29th. He never responded. If anything, the communication I got from my lawyer, whichever lawyer he actually procured called my lawyer and said they don't owe me any obligation or anything because they are providing everything which is a lie moving forward i did not push him i was waiting to find out if he's actually going to come up with a date or at least reach out to my lawyer we have a constructive meeting on how to bring up these children because i was aware he has moved on with another person he has a new family i do not want to interfere i don't want to be called a homebreaker i do not want those insults people have been calling me that have not moved on and that i want him back what makes me mad is that days to come he made my life miserable. He made it very difficult by not cooperating, by not actually giving me a leeway. This is around the same time he went to expose about this deadbeat dad story and I got attacked. And I remember picking up the phone and telling him, Frankie, how can you let the mother of your children get attacked like that? Have you actually, are you actually saying I said something or who are you trying to address? And he said I was addressing the bloggers. Then I told him, why are you letting people insult me? Why don't you just put up a disclaimer and say, hey, this is meant for the bloggers. Because you know very well, Frankie, I have done everything possible to make peace and to be respectful to you. I'm not perfect. We've had our ups and downs, but I have done nothing but respect you and do the right thing, especially being there for my kids. You subjected me to that, it worked for you, you gained followers, you gained clout using my kids. First of all, why would you even expose things to the society when you've not even tried to get a hold of me or even ask me anything? Just for pity. Let's, let's call it a spade. If it's a spade, it's a spade, it's not a big spoon. For clout. Over what? These kids, whatever you put out there, will never be erased. Let's move forward. I have my dates right. 
the last time after that um he came home he came uh, in fact i remember at this point he, was, he would see his kids every weekend apart from the one time a few times where my older son had to be with his best friend in their house and i could not pull that kid out of that home because frankie knew he's supposed to come he can he could have come home at any point in time i sent him the zoom classes program asking him hey anytime you want to drop by come and actually see your son doing his zoom classes has he ever shown up never he has never shown up moving forward mark the dates 24th of july served on 27th of july he never responded he's never responded till date till date fast forward the following week um i remember i think two weeks later he actually i i told him the last time he actually spent time with the boys i'm the one who actually told him come over because um this is on 7th of august i told him actually come over uh because uh there are three boys and so my kids and their best friend and i know you won't be able to handle these boys I'm, i won't even be in the house that's the same day i went with my best friend to naivasha guys feel free to go to my social media and see or even the video i put up i left him at home and i left it I left him at home and he did the usual which is to take pictures of my kids weekend chilling with my kids and all that parenting is not about social media and this is the moment i'll take to call out all those instagram dads you just want to post your kids and you're not doing anything for them i'm calling you out and i know i'm speaking for so many women right now i know i'm speaking for so many children right now parenting is being involved it's doing the right thing for your kids 7th of august he came he spent the day he was there the whole day i wasn't i didn't even come back after, after until after two days i kept taking up on my kids they were okay he disappeared the following weekend is when i traveled to diani when i traveled to diani i sent him a message and this was me because we had an 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 an, an, an agreement that wasn't working which was him to come and pick the kids on sunday but right now i was in dire need of structure hence the letter but this is what i told him since i knew and i didn't want to block him from seeing his kids i texted him i told him um i sent him pictures of my kids on the plane and i told him i'm gonna attach this too the boys did well on their first flight we are back on tuesday congratulations of you on, on your new baby both of you wayne diani this was on 14th 14th of august he never responded he never said anything we went we had fun we came back the following week on tuesday as planned and i can tell you this is the last week he ever sent money for upkeep in fact any kind of money till date and i have a screenshot of the last payment he made on mpesa which was um which was on um 8th of sorry 10th of august 10th of august again i will attach this 10th of august um that's the last 6000 he ever sent when i came back from diani uh it, this was on a tuesday he never sp sent money that week he never spoke to us he texted me on sunday sunday 23rd he's not sent money he's not explained why he had not sent money i don't know what he was thinking his kids are eating but he sent a message and told me uh, this is on uh, sunday he was supposed to, the idea was to, for him to collect the kids at 10. he sent this message at 9 50 saying i'll collect them at 11. i honestly i was alone with my babies it was on a sunday i had released my nanny of course i'm taking care of my kids and i remember i was putting down my son the youngest because he was unwell because of the coastal trip he shows up at the door and i'm like wow how are we going to operate like this why are you disrespecting my time why can't you even ask how are my kids doing so that i can explain to you um, um my baby kaka is not feeling well he never asked he just shows up he tells me i'm coming it's like a demand you know no respect it's okay. okay for someone to disrespect me but respect me as the mother of your children respect your children as well and i didn't i just told, he stood at the door and 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 uh, i told him hey um i'm trying to actually try to get him talk like why are you disrespect me like this how when is this gonna end are we gonna just be sitting waiting for you to show up 
and in fact you have a letter pending this is a whole month later you have a letter pending that you need to respond to and i never rushed him i never rushed him so he said am i not gonna take my kid i was like no today even before i explained that kaika is sick he had stormed off and true enough i followed him i tried to even like block him i'm like hey we need to talk he sat in the car he didn't even do anything he was just on phone calls and he told me you're gonna hear from my lawyers and i said it's okay it's okay in fact that's what i've been saying let's have lawyers to sit down and we discuss since we can't be you and have a conversation how to bring up these kids he's stormed off and that's when the narrative began that i've stopped him from seeing his kids i'm blocking him from seeing his kids that's when the narrative began and may he try to actually come and say otherwise because that's my truth the narrative began fast forward that was on sunday on tuesday he picks up his phone call this is a uh, he called me on 26th of august this was on a tuesday and he specifically told me i'm no longer gonna be sending this money because i can see my kids as often as i want to and i walked him through the conversation which i recorded by the way so and i said it's okay and i asked him so i asked you for structure um and i didn't let you just walk all over me and these kids lives and now your solution is to not send upkeep for them and i asked him a question and asked him so you when you don't do your duties i stop taking care of the kids is that the solution and he said he said nothing actually I have it on record and true enough he stopped he never sent any money till now let's send any money i was silent i said if that's the solution i'm not gonna force you i'm not gonna keep following you it's okay if that's what you've decided fine i stayed the first week it's okay in fact it was uh with salaries uh, my nanny's salary was due there was still food there was still all the bills i pay i paid without any complaint until 7th of uh september 2020 i'll never forget that phone call he picked up his phone with the same narrative and told me since i'm providing shelter and i can see my kids as often as i want to and i'm like wow wow uh -huh. you need to move out and i said okay so let me walk you through this again i read to you asking you to come and sit down with me to have structure for my kids i don't allow you to walk all over me when i've been so gracious and i never even stopped you from seeing the kids even after i did the letter and you didn't respond because he saw them twice in the following weeks and mind you all this time he's never called home he's never called anyone till now he's never called anyone even my nanny to find out how the boys doing what have they eaten what has happened what's new he doesn't know he doesn't know he actually i i, I told him okay is that so again this is on record i have a, the recorded phone call yes so you need to move out so i asked him okay fine so if that's the solution uh then i'm not gonna fight you how long do i have to move he said one month i said it's okay and true enough from september 7th all i ever did i knew i had a month i had to put my money right i had to look for an apartment it was hectic for a whole month i was just running around running around running around looking for an apartment thanks to god we found a nice home and my kids are settling down well and i'm grateful for even him and his mom letting me and my kids stay there but he kicked his kids out he kicked me and the kids out in the name of he can't see them as often as possible where's the logic there i didn't fight him i've never said anything to him until on 24th of September, mind you, he called me on, um, oh, sorry, actually the phone call came on 7th of September. I hope that is clear. On 24th of September, my son got really sick. You guys know this because, uh, I mean, I put it on, um, I think, my IG. He got sick. It was in the middle of the night. In fact, we got admitted at 3.11 a.m. 3.11 a.m. And in the hecticness of taking care of him, he had like the worst food poisoning. He was diarrheaing. We had not slept. He had not slept. So the whole day I spent, I spent it taking care of him and everything. I need you to note this. My kids don't have medical insurance. His responsibility. These are the things we were supposed to teach, uh, sit down and discuss. Meet me halfway. Let's have insurance. Kids get sick all the time. I still don't have medical insurance. My kids don't have medical insurance. But I was at the, ho the hospital and that 3 a.m. Again, this is something I'm going to attach. I put a deposit of 
a hundred and two thousand and hundred and fifty a hundred and two one hundred and fifty to for my son to be admitted I was not gonna call him at three. I don't want to be told to do I'm calling and I'm trying to break families and I want him back. No, I did not. In fact, I was like, do I even tell him? Because I thought it was going to be a short process the same day we come back home. But, and I told him, because I said, you know what? I'll inform him, these are important matters. But you can imagine how difficult it is to work with a person who you know they're not thinking about you, you know they don't care about you, they don't care about anything about those kids. Because I can tell you boldly right now. I can tell you boldly. It's not what you say, it's what you do for your children. And I told him, uh, September 24th, just letting you know that Kaiser had Gertrude since last night. He had severe stomach bug, but everything uh, is under control. We get released today, tomorrow, hopefully. Have a good evening. Well, true enough, Frankie showed up at the hospital at around 9. And I, I told him, I think we had a phone call, a messaging, and I told him the ward we were at and all that. He showed up, empty-handed. Millie and Terence can bear you witness. They were there. They had come to see me. They came. He came, sat there, uh, said hi to Kai, sat there. In, uh, you know, for anyone who's been ever admitted Gertrude, you know how, like, the bed, mommy's bed, the other bed, and a seat. And... I'm the one who was even asking, are you going to ask me what, what the doctor says, what's wrong with the kid? And I could feel the aggression and I was like, I'm not going to force this conversation. He sat there, did not even ask me anything. I'm the one who was forcing the conversation. Um, and I'm like, okay, wh wh why did I even have to do this? And true enough, I even told him, I actually put in some money. I put a deposit of 100000 and I think for now we should not worry about anything. But let me tell you, till now, he's never asked me, was the bill enough? Was, did you clear the hospital bill? Till now. The next thing he asked me was, who did the doctor say? And I told him, we've been discharged. We've been discharged, but we're still at the hospital. He did not bother to find out if we needed anything, if we can come see my child. Zero. Nothing. Till now. He doesn't know whether Kai got well. He doesn't know if nothing but what did he do he ran on social media to start saying oh everything is going to be okay son i want you guys to mark a pattern because i'm done and enough is enough he's never bothered to find out exactly what went wrong i paid for the entire bill at the receipt in as much as it was i put the deposit of 102 it came to 78,880. i think i forgot my receipt because i'm not in town right now but i will have to attach whatever i need to attach moving forward at this point mind you we've been kicked out he's not been supporting his kids this is going to almost um six seven weeks and i'm not bothering him i've never bothered frankie i've never told him anything true i i found an apartment and uh as of fifth remember that that guy guys uh when i went to this hotel called the curve that was us transitioning i had to take the boys to the curve so that i can have the you know you know how move, hectic moving is moved moved and we moved out on 7th 7th of uh, actually 6th of october this was exactly a month from what i was told because i had to obey because i did not know what someone is holding on my head i feel scared i felt scared i used to live with my door closed because i don't know exactly what's gonna happen but can you imagine living in a place where but you don't know what security is there i've been insulted because of living in that home with my kids i've been subjected to every kind of humiliation and i was i said enough is enough it's okay we'll scramble we'll live under the tree i was gonna do it and true enough i moved i moved and not only did i move you guys need to note this. I had renovated the other house. I removed whatever was mine and I fixed it and I really fixed it. And that's when I finally did this handover note to him through my lawyer. And when I did this handover note, I need you, uh, let me just retract back. He texted me on 7th, the same, actually the same day we were moving. Uh, this is on um, October 6th. The same day I'm going crazy, he says, I'd like to see Lexi on his birthday, if that's possible. And I'm like, wow, wow, you kick us out, you're not providing for this, but you want to see my child on his birthday. What do you think he eats? What do you think he wears? 
oh by the way guys i did not even mention i paid for school fees as well beginning of september when he actually decided he wouldn't do this i paid for school fees as well he's never bothered to find out whether my son goes for his own classes but he's aware because we're in the same whatsapp group for our school never bothered all these things i'm doing on my own i'm not bothering anyone because i have said enough is enough let me find my peace let me give my kids peace because if i'm not okay they're not gonna be okay i don't the only thing i've not done is entertain him i've not talked to him in any way that's how i'm gonna keep it but remember i put everything on record including those two phone calls of him cutting out of uh, support and kicking his kids out of the house when he's texting me of course my mind is not there i'm not gonna be responding to him i was busy moving i was busy moving up and down and trying to settle down and trying to fix the other house and eventually this letter which is dated on 15th of october it even says we are informed that around 7th october uh, actually supposed to be september 2020 at 10 12 via telecon you directed our client to vacate the above mentioned property where she has been living with the children all right and our instructions are to formally hand over the keys and the premises to you and your representative frankie the server looked for him akamzungusha I, I don't know maybe let me not be uh, biased right now but all i know is that he, he was supposed to come to the house and check if the house is okay and he's handed over the key and he signs over because i don't want to ever be told i don't want that to ever happen i've done everything due diligence everything i have done everything clean cut and with honesty but still he had to the same day that 20th when my son is supposed to be celebrating his fifth birthday he's not even asking me okay where can i drop his gift he's not even he just wants him so that he can take him wherever he wants to take i don't know where i don't know where he lives i don't know where he's taking him he doesn't the worst part is he doesn't know what these children eat he, he's not taking care of my kids since 10th of august and in between we got kicked out i've had hospital bills to pay for school fees and everything i've done all that may he pro produce one receipt one to contradict anything i'm saying right now guys you know how this is this humiliating i was done keeping quiet i was like you know what my truth will come out but i'm like how about those women who are out there suffering like me because of something they've not done i've been working and breaking my back day and night taking care of my children till now he's very aware we are no longer in that house through this letter because he signed it and the kids had to be taken i don't know to on mambasa road so that he can sign he didn't want to come to the house to check i hope he doesn't claim that he signed for something he didn't know about but then thankfully i took record of everything the next video going up is about me moving houses and you see how i left that house because I don't want to ever be associated with this kind of emotional turmoil. I literally recovered from the worst depression I could go through because of the kind of mental distress I had been put under. No one has ever sat me down. Nobody, not anyone. He's never sat me down to say, okay, Maureen, uh, so things are like this, yeah? Um, how can we make this thing work? It was always me. I'm the one who sat him down and I told him, I bless your relationship with this lady. If that's what's going to make you a better man, so be it. But I'm still the one being called bitter. I'm still the one being called... Trust me, I have these screenshots of you people, the cyber bullies, coming to me. Uh, from this, this Maureen is a liar. I've been called a liar. She's always crying how things are hard for her. Things are hard. I've been raising my kids at least in the last two months. And before that, it was always difficult. Ask Frankie, when's the last time he bought a shirt for his kid? A toy. It was always me, like, hey, dude, since they see you once a week, show up with something. Create a memory with your kids. Where does he think he, they get their haircuts from? He will get a haircut every week. He'll get a fade. Ask him where, where Kai, let's say, Kai Kai go for Nini for haircuts. He will never miss his weekly fade. But I'm there, nangangana na watoto wangu, I take them, and you all know I've kept my kids very well. I'm going to give them the best life. I'm going to give them the best life. If anything, if he feels like he's been blocked, he's not been told, I mean, where, where are you asking to see my kids? Where are we? Do you even know where we live? You've never bothered? You don't know where we live? You don't know what they eat? You don't know anything. But on social media, you'll go and anika, you, the mother of your children, 
Even if you hate me, surely, at least respect your kids. These things will never be erased. And this is me now not defending. Because I want to teach my kids to defend themselves. Family can be toxic. And this is exactly what's happening. It's a very toxic environment. If I was a bad, if he's claiming what he's claiming, the first course of action could have been to take me to court or take me to and act, or actually contact my lawyer and say, hey, this woman is not doing ABCD and I've done my obligations. Me, I'm doing everything 100%. My kids are under my care. And the only reason I've not taken him to court till now, because I'm sure a lot of you will ask, first of all, I'm not going to do that dragging of things and I'm not going to force someone to be a parent. I was I went through that trying to force a, a parenthood with childhood it's damaging it's more damaging people will say oh we let the child grow around the father I don't have a problem till now I, I'll be very honored the day he will actually contact my lawyer and say okay I've decided this is what's gonna happen this is what I can provide and I would want to see my kids ABCD but no you're not gonna no one is gonna walk all over me Knowing very well in that labor ward, I was at, I mean, literally, I was pushing that baby, those two babies. And my, my, my heart is for those women who know what they've done. It's for those kids, even grown up people who know that their parents, one of the parents did everything, the other one was taking credit for that. How selfish can you be to use a post to celebrate your own child? And underneath, there is like comments about the mother of your children being trolled over a story that you know is a lie. I know I'm speaking for thousands of women. This has to stop. And this is not a pity party. This is not justification. This has to stop once and for all. I have gone through so much mental turmoil, recovered. And trust me, not again. I'm not going to do this again. This is the last time I'm going to address the father of my children. And I've never done this so directly. Ikome, let it stop. Do the right thing. Provide for your children. Let's have a meeting. You don't even have to meet me. Have a meeting with my lawyer. Sit down as a family. You have two children out here. Social media is not... Putting them on social media doesn't mean feeding them. And we all know how many dads do that. You can write a long, beautiful message to manipulate people to think ABCD. But you don't know what your children are eating at home. You don't know where they are. You don't know their welfare. You, you've missed every milestone. You don't know what diapers they wear. You don't know the struggles we have at night. You don't have a relationship with them. Hell, you don't, wouldn't even call home. You wouldn't even call my nanny. Because I'm like, I have gotten myself out of that picture. What effort have you made to be a present dad? To be this dad you keep talking about? My kids are not props. They're not puppies. They're actual human beings who deserve their right. And their responsibility and I'm talking for every mother and for every child out there you will bring kids to this world to provide for them to protect them and I'm gonna protect my kids with everything I have and I urge you moms who are going through the same thing do not shut up you will die leave your kids there out of depression I know how it feels like to go through mental turmoil when you're silenced and you don't know what you can say my silence has just to protect but right now it's over because if I can't be protected when will it ever end? It will keep going on and on and on and on. Look, you don't have to use my name to chase your clout. You do not need me to rise. You don't need to drag me down to rise. Be happy with the new family you have. I am happy too. I'm happy where I am. I'm in a very good place. My business is going so well. My heart is well taken care of. I'm happy. People screaming, move on, I want you, I don't want you back. I know exactly what I deserve. And someone who disrespects my kids? Oh no, that's not what I deserve. Someone who can respect me? I don't deserve that. I'm very happy. Just because I don't put everything online and say, oh, I'm with this. No. My happiness is mine and I've kept it intact. I will never expose myself to this again let it stop and today i say enough is enough all those insults and now let me address those cyber bullies people when will you ever learn to actually not get involved with things you don't understand be sharp up here all the time 
bandwagon going flowing you don't even know what's going on has anyone stopped to ask themselves uh -huh. so what's the other side of the story why do you think i'm silent why do you think i've been maintaining silence why do you think i keep covering because i protect my family men out there you know what you're supposed to do man protect provide profess it's very simple mental abuse is real psychological and emotional abuse is, is real that's exactly what i'm going through right now because i can't do anything i'm paralyzed i've had anxiety i'm almost going back to my depression medication but i'm not gonna do that because of someone who controls my life i'm not gonna let that happen now that you don't have anything to control me by you have to tell lies about me out there that's the lowest someone can go from now on I'm addressing you this, I'm telling you this frankly, keep my kids off social media, keep their personal affairs off social media, keep my name out of social media. If you want anything right by, done by you, go to court. Or better yet, contact my lawyer. We have all the records, everything. But this is what I'm going to say. I'm not going to bring up broken children just because of this perfection the society has put up. It's my responsibility to protect them from toxicity, from people who just want to have them for their gain. They're minors for crying out loud. We have all a responsibility to take care of our kids and protect them. That's what I'm going to say. Finally, the bloggers, before we pick up a story, always get the other side of the story. All the time, it's always about siding with this person siding with that person of a story you don't understand honestly unless you're in my shoes i don't see where you have to judge report however you want but this pity party has to end this narcissism has to end do the right thing instead of going on social media to do all those things show up and do what you're supposed to do this is me addressing anyone who knows they're not doing the right thing for their children. I've done my part. I'm finally getting my peace. I finally have a new home, a peaceful environment. I'm able to provide for my babies. And since I'm the one who hasn't moved on, why do you keep dragging my name into it? I think you need to move on. You need to move on. I have moved on. I'm happy. Damn, I'm happy. And thanks for actually pushing me to my greatness. This was going to be raw, ruthless, and cutthroat. Because we are not doing this again. Stand up for yourselves, ladies. And pray, man. This has spiritual wars, by the way. Break these generational curses once and for all. Don't be pushed around. Don't agree to be pushed around. No one deserves that. And today is not the day. Say no today, devil. It's not today. I know I've gone on and on and on, but I'm very passionate about this. Please, and I hope, I, I mean, I had to do my notes. I hope you take away the message of the whole aspect of cyberbullying, mental, emotional, psychological abuse, and parental responsibility. Be a present parent. Do the right thing. Don't do it for social media. Do it for your children. Make memories with them. Work for them. Provide for them. Protect them. And by the way, this whole new thing of mental, psychological abuse, I'm talking of even towards children. There are things on social media that have already gone up, which I did not even instigate that they will never be erased. And my kids are going to read that. I'm in the public eye. I wonder how many women are also down there who are just regular ladies out there who are going through exactly what I'm going through. What I'm trying to say is you're not alone. You're not alone. This has to stop. This male privilege of women being bashed left, right and center because of doing the right thing has to stop. And the worst thing, it's you women who actually come and attack another woman over things you don't even understand. I've seen people come in to apologize to me in my DMs. They're like, hey, sorry, Maureen, I judged you because I did not understand. Not that I'm in your shoes. I can understand. Don't get 
involved in things you don't even understand. Educate yourself. And if you have something to say, be, be, have criticism, positive criticism. Let's stop this sheepish mentality of moving left, right, and center just because the ship is going that way. Let's, let's get serious. Let's stop this narrative. Let's protect our kids. Let's protect our future generations. And I'm going to end this here by saying this. I've said my part and I'm going to do the right thing for my kids. But no, my name is not going to be dragged and trolled anymore. And I'm happy to be a voice. And today I hope you can go back. I've really taken quite some time to think about this video. I hope you can go back and realize that whatever is happening is not normal. For those women who are going through this, it's not normal. Whatever happens is not right. You cannot surely use kids who have no say to manipulate an entire nation just so that the other person can be bashed. What if I don't have work anymore? What akula nini? Since you're not providing, what would the kids eat? I know many women who've slipped into depression because of this kind of nonsense. I can tell you I'm a strong person. I've gone through it and I came out of it. And I'm literally living my best life right now. Don't let it dictate anything. It's not normal. Speak out. And let me be the face of enough is enough. This is the last time I'm going to address this. I know what I'm doing. I've done all my due diligence. I've done the right thing. If the father of my children has anything else to say, he can take it to court or take it to my lawyer. Social media won't help anyone. But this is me. Not as coming here to defend myself. No, I'm not doing that anymore. It's to actually tell you women out there, I know exactly how it feels like to be going through what I'm going through. Defend yourselves. Stand up for your kids. Don't bring up damaged children just because this other person is manipulating or taking you round and round and psychologically manipulating you. It's wrong. We have to end this once and for all. Peace and light. It's sad that I have to be put in such a situation whereby I have to speak. I know a lot of you will agree, oh, I had nothing. I did not have to come in. You know, I know a lot of you can see things for what they are. But that's my truth. That's my truth. And my kids are in very good hands. If you want to see your kids, first of all, do the due diligence. If you want to see your kids, where do you, where do you think we live? Because you don't bother to ask. What do you think they eat? Ask yourself that before you come to bash me or put my name to be bashed out there. That's all. And I give you all the love and light. Know that there are laws and actually ways to go about this. If I ever address this, I'll come on board with a lawyer and I'll actually talk to you. I'm a lawyer and I don't want to act in that capacity right now, but I know, I know the law about children's uh, rights and parental responsibility. It's very simple. But this other thing that is being done, the manipulation and all that, and victim playing has to end. Like I said, enough is enough. Thank you guys, and see you on the next one.